Lord in our service. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have to worship you and lift up your name. Lord, we pray this morning for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. Holy Ghost, we invite you to come this morning. And Lord, that you would do the will of the Father. In Jesus' mighty name, minister and bless every person under the sound of my voice. I will you too. I pray God to touch today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. I was having a pastor one time many years ago, and uh, we he, he and I were in a pastor commission meeting, I guess you would call it, and uh, he was talking about a certain person in the church. He felt like the Lord was uh, pulling on that person to fulfill a position that was needed to be fulfilled. And I told him, I said, well, we know that he's not, you know, he's not right. He's not walking right with God. He said, it just takes one trip to the altar. Amen? Amen. How many trips does it take? Just one trip to the altar. And that's not the only trip, of course, but we, we, uh, we know that we can get right with God in one trip to the altar. I think that I'm in the book of Romans this morning, chapter number 8, and I'm going to read from verse number 2. Romans chapter number 8 and Romans uh, verse 2. The 8th chapter of Romans is a challenging word of God. It would challenge you and I. It would challenge our theology sometimes because we like to think that we're invincible, that we're eternal here. We like to think we got it in a bag. And we, got, we like to think that the devil ain't going to bother me. I mean, knows that's not the truth. If he had been by your house this week because he's been camped out at mine, Amen. I mean, he had a big tent with him. He brought all of his imps with him this week. Amen. How many understands that statement? But I want to tell you there's victory in Jesus this morning. And the blood of the Lamb of God is still intact. And it's still applied to all of us. And in our minds, body, soul, strength, and desire. Without that blood, we'd be in trouble. But with that blood, the devil's in trouble. How many knows that's the truth? So I believe that God's on our side. It's good to have everybody here this morning. I just feel a good spirit in the house. I just feel a good spirit of worship and communion with God. And I appreciate you being here. Romans 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life. How many knows there's the law of the spirit? Actually, there are eight laws in the book of Romans. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. From the law of sin and death. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the setting that we have. And by YouTube and Facebook, we thank you for that. We ask you, God, to touch every individual, including me. I ask for that anointing that makes preaching easy. Give me the prophetic unction this morning of the words of God. That, Lord, it can be moved in the hearts and the lives of people and applied to our walk with you. And Lord, I'm careful to praise you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Paul in the book of Romans is talking to Christians in Rome. He's trying to get their attention and he says, for the law, and you know this also, that there, when Jesus died and rose again, the third day they were under the law until the resurrection of Christ. Uh, some preacher said some years ago, it took 53 years from the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the law to be dispelled and the grace of God. How many know some people still want to live under the law? If you live under the law, you've got to keep the whole law, the Bible said. You can't just keep parts that you like. Same way with grace. You can't just do the things that you like to do so much and not take all of it. I believe the Bible from cover to cover. Amen? It applies to me. I'm not under the law. You're not under the law. We're under grace. And thank God for the vehicle of grace that the Lord Jesus Christ put in the world that all mankind can come to the presence of God the Father boldly that we can make our requests known unto Him. Without the grace of God this morning, you and I would still be in the same trouble Israel was in 
when they was following God through the wilderness, even into the promised land. But there are eight laws. I want to deal with these this morning. I want to deal with the eight laws in the book of Romans. It teaches us things. First of all, there's justification by faith. For the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you're living under the law, faith is a null. But if you're living by faith, the law is a null. Because we're living by grace. Did I confuse anybody this morning? So it says, uh, the law of Moses in Romans chapter 2. I'm going to give you a few minutes to turn to these scriptures. They're very important. If you underline or highlight, this is a good time to do that. Because these are some powerful scriptures in the day and hour in which we're living. The law of Moses, Romans chapter 2, verse 12, Paul said, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. The law was our schoolmaster. The law was not our schoolmaster. Let me rephrase that. The law was Israel's schoolmaster. It only pointed to their problems and their laws and their sins against God. It didn't give them a way out. It only pointed to that. Can you imagine how they felt uh, on a daily basis when the priest said, you've sinned here. Well, how do I get out of sin? Well, you've got to come and, and shed the blood of a lamb uh, on the day of atonement. It won't forgive you of your sins, but it'll, it'll postpone it till next year. I don't want mine postponed. I want it forgiven. I want sins forgiven. That I don't have to deal with them again. Sin hath no more dominion over a child of God that's covered by the blood. Boy, that's shouting ground this morning. We should be shouters of glory unto God because our sins are forgiven. Now in Romans the third chapter, verse 19, Paul said, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? All the legalistic people can be under the law if they want to. They don't want to keep the whole law. They just want you to have long hair, long sleeves, no makeup, and no children. What does that got to do with righteousness? Righteousness is not a haircut. Well, if it did, I wouldn't have any. Amen. Brother Hamilton's laughing. You wouldn't laugh much, brother. Amen. So here's the thing about cloth and hair. Righteousness does not feel cloth and hair. Amen. Righteousness is of the Lord in the forgiveness of sin applied to our life. We walk in the righteousness of God. Our righteousness is as filthy rags unto the Lord. Jesus paid the price. You know what a price he paid for the sins that I've committed and the sins that you committed. He paid a great price by the death of the cross. The whipping at the judgment post of Herod. He, took, he paid a great price for sins and not only sins to be forgiven but that our bodies would be healed. He shed blood for the healing of our bodies. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now listen to this. Where, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and the just and the good. Uh, the law of nature is this. Romans 2, 14 and 15. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do not nature the things uh, do by nature the things in the law these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Nature has a law of itself. And you know what nature does. Nature has a law of itself and it follows the law. Let me share this with you. When God gave nature its law, nature didn't complain. Jesus didn't die for nature. Jesus didn't die for the tree. He didn't die for the herbs or the grass. Jesus died for mankind. All mankind was covered by the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. Amen. Now listen to this. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness to their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. 
You see, the law excused you for a year. It abused you, of course. The law abused you. Let me give you an example of that. When uh, Joshua was in battle, I believe it was the Midianites, God told him not to get anything from the Midianites. Achan heard the word that God said, but he decided to do his own thing. You know, we do get in trouble by doing our own thing. Have you ever been out there by yourself like Peter and Jesus say, Satan, get thee behind me. In other words, you need to follow the footsteps of Christ, not try to lead Christ. Jesus don't need to be led. Some folks don't realize that. But Achan heard it, but in the battle, Achan stole, stole a Babylonian garment and a wedge of gold, and he hid it under the tent floor. You got to hide it, you know it's wrong. Hello? You got to hide it, you know it's wrong. So you can't hide it from God. And in the battle, Israel lost 30, I believe it was 30 men in this battle. And it moved Joshua because God said you weren't going to lose anybody. And Joshua inquired of the Lord. And God spoke to Joshua. He didn't say nothing to Achan. He'd already said his word. He said, he talked to Joshua and he said, Joshua, there's sin in the camp. Now listen, you're talking about 12 tribes of Israel. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Amen. And they searched out and they found out that Achan was the culprit of the sin that caused 30 people to die. Don't think for one thing that your sin don't cause people to die. They may not die a physical death, but they'll die a spiritual death. Because when we get our eyes on people, then we're following the wrong thing. When we get our eyes on Jesus, then we follow the right thing. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let me finish my story. So they went to Achan's tent and they discovered he stole gold in a Babylonian garment. And the punishment was dead. They didn't mix any words. They pulled Achan out of the tent, pulled his wife out of the tent, pulled his children out of the tent, all that he had. He pulled it out of the tent, all of his cows, he pulled it out of the tent, carried it to the outside of the camp, and stoned them to death because of gold and a garment. That was the law. That was the law that God enforced. Needless to say, folks got scared. If they had stolen anything, they carried it back. Would you? Amen. Now, the third one is the law of faith. Romans 4, 3 and 5 says, For what saith the Scriptures? You know, you have to find your uh, guidance and your foundation in the Word of God. Some people don't count the Word of God as much. I'll just be honest with you. Some people don't count the Word of God. Some think it's just a historical book. Some think it's just like the Reader's Digest, just read it for historical value. Some people think that it's a good book to, to do different things, but they don't really know the power that's in God's Word. When God speaks this Word, it becomes a lie. When Paul wrote the book of Romans, it became a lie. Paul heard what God said through the Spirit and began to pen the words in the book of Romans in order for people to read and understand this is what God said. So there's a law of faith uh, for what saith the scripture. Abraham believed God it was counted to him for righteousness. Well, Abraham lived before the law. Amen. There was no law when Abraham lived. He had a communion with the Father, him and God. Uh, Abraham was the apple of God's eye, sure. Abraham was the father of faith, sure. Abraham brought faith in. God dealt with Abraham about the, the birthing of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, Abraham didn't have but one son. His name was Isaac. Isaac had uh, Esau and Jacob. Uh, Esau wasn't the, the seed of the promise. Jacob was the seed of the promise. And God put his hand on Jacob. He was a deceiver, a subplanter. He was a uh, lied to his uh, daddy when he put wool, his mama put wool on his arm to deceive his Isaac about the, the first blessing of the son. 
and then he had to flee. And when he fled, he met an angel and wrestled all night with him. You see, that's what happens when you're a sub planter. Amen? When you're a sub planter, you have to wrestle a lot. And he wrestled with that angel all night long. And just before the day, the angel said, you've got to turn me loose because the day is breaking. He said, I'm not going to turn you loose till you bless me. So he blessed him, but it cost him to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. The hall of his thigh, he lived the rest of his life. But Jacob, what I'm getting to here is Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. You wonder why Jacob had to deal with all he had to deal with. It's because God chosen him to be the father of all of Israel. You see, that's why you're going through what you're doing. God's got a calling on you. He's got a favor on you. He's got a blessing on you. He's got something in your life that the devil is trying to steal from you. And you're having to fight a spiritual battle. It's not an easy battle. It's a battle of life and death. Not a physical life and physical death. But it's a battle of spiritual life and spiritual death. And the Bible said, choose you life. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. We have to choose life. Sure, it's not easy. Sure, we go through things. I could just go on and on about characters in the Bible that when God put their hand on them, the devil come immediately to destroy and to kill and to steal from them. It's no different than it is today than it was back then. The only thing, we are living in grace and we can walk in the presence of God and we can pray unto the Lord ourselves. We can hear from God ourselves. That's the difference between New Testament grace and Old Testament law. Who wants to live on the law and depend on a priest to stand in the mediator between you and God? And that priest might be a wicked one. Amen. But it's the law of faith. Verse 4 of the uh, fourth chapter of Romans. Now to him that worketh is the reward and not reckoneth of grace but of death. Debt. See, you can't earn your salvation. You can't be good enough to get saved. You can't. You have to depend on Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. So we have to depend on Him. Now listen to what it says, verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on Him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. When we come before the Lord to be saved, we are wicked. We can't look at ourselves any other way. We're wicked. We're sinners. We've cursed God many times. But coming in grace, oh man, you just don't realize what grace is. I tell you this all the time. Grace is the vehicle that allowed us to approach the throne of God no matter what kind of spiritual condition that we're in. God allows you a presence with Him so He can change your life. He's a life changer. He's a world changer. But it's all by faith because we're living in grace. If his faith is counted as righteousness. For righteousness. His faith in God. Do you have faith in God? Amen. Do you have faith in God? R.W. Schambach says you don't need miracles. All you need is faith in God. He's the source of miracles. You've got to have faith in him. Is there anything too hard for God? Have you encountered anything this week that was too hard for you? Have you run against a closed door? Have you run against something that you can't move? Have you stumped your toe on a mountain you can't climb? And you say, God, I can't do this. And God said, well, just back up. I'm going to make a way where there is no way. I'm going to part the Red Sea. I'm going to stop Jordan. Whatever that way, I'm fixing to make a way. He's a way maker this morning. Hallelujah. God. It gets impossible for you and I. But there's nothing impossible for God. If thou canst only believe all things are possible to him that believe. We've got to believe God. If we can believe God for salvation, why don't we believe God for everything else? Healing of our bodies. Sanity in our minds. Amen. Have you ever woke up one morning sitting on the side of the bed? 
You couldn't figure out if you just got up to go to work or you just sat down to go to bed. <laughs> this being confused is a termite in a yo-yo. Well, I'm going to tell you a man called Jesus to straighten it out. Yes. He'll give you the mind of Christ. Amen. I said he'll give you the mind of Christ. He'll show you a way and he'll make a way where there is no way. God will make a way. I don't care if it's in the desert. I don't care if it's in the wilderness. I don't care if it's in the middle of the Red Sea. My God will make a way. Amen. And your God too. The law of the mind. That's the law of faith. We have a law of the mind. I mean, it has problems with your mind. Don't raise your hand. That's the greatest battlefield that we have is our mind right here between our ears. Nobody else knows what you're dealing with in your mind unless you tell it. Everybody has a battlefield in their mind. And listen, it's an intense battle. Again, it's life and death. In Romans chapter 7 verse 16, Paul said, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. If I do those things that I know not to do, then I consent to the law that the law is good. That's a battle in the mind. Do you ever realize in the midst of battles and, and uh, warfare that we have uh, the ability to be in the grace of God or we are in the grace of God which is substantial? What did God tell Paul? Jesus said, Paul, my grace is sufficient. My, whatever you're going through, Paul, whatever you're dealing with, Paul, I don't care how embedded it is in your side. I don't care how big of a thorn it is in your flesh. My grace is sufficient. Do you call on the grace of God? Do you have to say, God, I need more grace today. The greater the gift of God, the more is the grace that comes with it. Amen. So the mind in uh, Romans 7 and 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, man, I got up, I got up this morning, I'm going to do good. I got it on me. I'm going to do good. That's what Paul said. But now, that wasn't the end of it. He said, uh, verse 21, I find that a law that when I do would do good, evil is presence with me. When you get up and you make a decision to do better today, the devil is right there. Amen. He wants to know which way you're going. He wants to know which way you're walking. He wants to know what you're going to do when you get out of bed and get ready for the day. How I many knows you've got to get ready for the day? If you don't, the day is ready for you. But you have to get ready for the day. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. you got to have a sharp sword. And a shield of faith intact. You can't leave home without the sword being sharp. It can't have gaps in it. Doug, it's got to be able to divide. It's got to be able to defend. And it's also got to be able to pursue. And the shield of faith wars off all the fiery darts of the enemy. It doesn't matter how he comes against you. Raise your faith by grace. Through faith am I saved, not by the works of man. I'm saved through faith. Amen. But now listen to this. In uh, verse 23 it says, But I see another law in my members. Sometimes your body don't want to cooperate. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes our body don't want to cooperate. I go further than that. Sometimes our mind don't want to cooperate. I go further than that. Sometimes our spirit don't want to cooperate. Amen? I mean, those are flesh of but rebel. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But we have to walk in the presence of God. The Word of God needs to leave a residue on us. Because when the devil looks at us, he needs to see a residue. You know what a residue of the Word is? It's faith. When the devil looks at us, he needs to see faith is in operation in this house. Because it's by faith that we please God. And without faith, you can't please Him. But with that faith of God, you can please Him. The Word tells us that. By faith, we please God. But we need that residue on us 
So the devil can recognize I'm walking by faith. Because you know why? He'll tell you to do this. I'm going to speak to somebody this morning. The devil will tell you this. Well, you don't see no results of your prayer. You don't see nothing materialize in that. You've been praying all this time and there's nothing moving God's not going to do. Boy, I feel that all over my body. Because some of you, the devil's told you that. But here's the thing about the devil. He needs to see the residue of you. And this is what you need to tell him. I'm walking in the footprints of my Lord. Yeah. I don't have to see results to know results is on the way. I don't have to hear results because results is on the way. Yeah. Amen. The affectionate, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a woman availeth much. I know my prayer got to heaven. I know God's got my prayer and caught my tears and God's going to answer what I call in His name of that. And devil, you might as well find somebody else to aggravate because you're not aggravating me. I'm looking to see God answer prayer. Here's what you ought to do. When you walk out of the house, out of the door of your house into the yard, this is what you ought to do. And the devil said, what you looking at? My answered prayers here somewhere today. You've got to make a bold in my daddy by You've got to make a believer out of him. You've got to make a believer out of him. You've got to do it to the fact that he don't want to camp around your house anymore. He's going to go somebody else because he knows he's not going to deceive you or deceive me. So he's an unwelcome guest. Amen. That's the law of the mind. Now, what about the law of sin? What? If, what? If, this is in uh, Romans eight and twenty-three. The law of sin. He deals with this, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Not only they, but ourselves also. We're not on this thing by ourselves.
I'm not going to cover all 15 of them, but I'm going to cover a few. The first one is justify. Justification is just as if you had committed sin. And Paul said, we live by faith, or the just shall live by faith, just as if we had committed any sin. But now listen to this, Galatians 2 and 16, Paul said, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, you can't keep enough laws to get in heaven. Amen. But he goes on to say this, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Your hair can be just as long and drag ten feet behind you. But that won't get you to heaven. I would make it. People are ignorant of the fact that Jesus saves. That's all. Jesus saves. We want to interject everything in it to make it complicated and hard as we can, but the fact of the matter is Jesus saves. If you got long hair, he'll save you, but there's no glory in it. Amen? Amen. If you're a sinner and your pants legs drags out your tracks in a sand bed, Jesus will save you, but that pants leg won't save you. You understand that. It's the grace of God. Now listen to this. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The law can't save you. I'm preaching to somebody today. I don't know who. But I'm telling you, if you're wrapped up in the legalistic things of the law, you need to get out of it. You need to find a church that preaches grace you need to find a church that preaches Jesus Christ. You need to pre find a church that preaches healing. You need to find a church that preaches the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. You need to find your church to get away from the legalistic things because legalistic things do not save us. Amen. Free from condemnation. This is what the law could not do. Romans 8, 1 and 4. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You understand me? If we are under the law, we're under condemnation. It continuously condemns us of our sin. But when we're saved in grace, there's therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm free from the law of sin and death because of salvation. I'm justified by faith. Amen? People say, well, who do you think you are? I'm a child of God, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, repented of my sins on my way to heaven. Have you made it yet? Have you made the decision yet? Have you made that decision yet? I'm on my way to heaven. And I've got a sword and a spirit. I wonder why Paul put that in Ephesians. I wonder why the Lord moved on him to say, you need to get, tell them they got to have an armor on. They got to have an armor on. They got to have a helmet, a breastplate of righteousness, a sword, and a shield. Got to have a Lawrence girt about, about with the preparation of the gospel of peace on the feet. Got a loins girt about with truth. You've got to have the whole armor of God on because it's warfare. It didn't sound like a Sunday school picnic. It sounded like somebody had to fight for what you got. You had to fight for your salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You've got to fight for your salvation. 
when the devil comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him, and the liberty and the freedom of you walking in the presence of God will defeat every devil that comes against you. Now listen to this. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Here's what Jesus did. He told the Father, said, the Father said, I need a sacrifice for sin. Jesus said, I'll be that Paschal Lamb. I'll be that supreme sacrifice. I'll go down there. I'll be the sacrifice that ends all sacrifices. I'll be Him. I'll be the one. God's only Son. And the Bible said, for God so loved the world. All this took place because of love. And the devil will tell you, God don't love you. You're going through what you're going through because God don't love you. You know what I tell him? I say, you're a liar and the father of all liars. And the truth is not in you. Jesus died for me. He shed his blood for me. Drew his last breath for me. And when they put him in a tomb, it was just borrowed for three days. He didn't need it. He wasn't going to be there very long. And on that third day, he rose triumphantly over death, hell, and the grave and gave me the power to become the sons of God. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm washed in his blood. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. For what the law could not do in verse 3, in that it was weak in the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He that knew no sin bore my sin on the tree. Jesus did not commit sin. Verse 4 said, and the righteous, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How about that? Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, I come to fulfill it. And Jesus fulfilled the law to every jot and tittle. When he gave up the ghost on the cross, it had been fulfilled. And then we were grafted in by the blood of Jesus through repentance. We are grafted in to him. Not through the law, but through the Spirit. By the Spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit of adoption. Amen? Now listen to this. We, the law could not redeem us. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. You see, the law was a curse. And the way it was a curse was it let everybody know you're doing bad, but it won't let you know what to do to do good. It changed it. It held you there. You were in bondage. You were in bondage to sin, and you were in bondage to the law. How many people want to live in bondage? I want to live in liberty and freedom of the Spirit of God. Amen. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How about that? Verse 14 says of the third chapter of Galatians, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Let me show you something. We were alienated from God, Paul said. You were alienated. Gentiles, you were alienated. You didn't have a God. You were just out there flip-flopping in the world. You was a fish out of water, a man without a country. You didn't have anything. Amen? You just did what you wanted to do until Jesus sent somebody there to preach the gospel. And he sent Paul out there to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles began to listen. Amen. I'm glad I listened. July the 22nd, 1979. I'm glad I listened. Aren't you? And we listened. And the Gentiles began to listen. And they heard the gospel. The most powerful message in the world is the gospel of Jesus Christ preached through an anointed preacher taught through an anointed teacher. It's powerful. The word's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's powerful. It'll do to stand on. It'll do to live by. It'll do to die by. It's God's holy word applied to the sinfulness of our soul. And Jesus preached to Paul to preach to the Gentiles. 
And he began to preach to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles started to get saved. The Jews didn't like it. They didn't want the Gentiles saved. They were heathen. Samaritans didn't have a right because they were dogs. You see, sometimes we think, ah, oh, that person don't deserve being saved. How do we know? We didn't die for it. Would you die? Would you go to the cross? Would you let them beat you with a cat of nine tails, 40 times saved one, 39 stripes, and flog you all the way to Golgotha's hill? Would you want somebody to nail you to a cross and spit on you? Pull your beard out. Amen. Mock you with just for one person's soul that you don't think and ought to have a right to go to heaven. People on death row that's murderers, mass murderers, they get saved and they're in heaven. Sometimes we think, man, they didn't deserve it. Did Paul deserve it? I mean, you study after his word. He was a murderer. He separated families. He carried the paperwork to put them in prisons and dungeons. And yet we studied two-thirds of the New Testament because of a man that nobody wanted to go to heaven. And Jesus saved him on the road to Damascus, made a personal appearance to him, appeared unto him on the road to Damascus. And he got saved and went to Ananias' house. Amen. It had scales over his eyes and couldn't see, but he prayed and fasted for three days, and God heard it, sent a man of God to it to lay hands on. I believe God wants everybody saved, don't you? I believe God wants everybody saved. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Listen, Jesus saves souls. Wow. We want to focus on everything else. We want to focus on our billfolds. We want to focus on our health, on our food, on our house, on our vehicle. Lord, we want to focus on this to give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But Jesus, it didn't say that the Lord come to give us a new house or a new car or a new billfold full of money. Jesus came to save souls. I know some of this other stuff is incorporated. But his main thing is he came to save the lost. Of which Paul said, I am the chiefest. I'm the chief. You know, sometimes we don't like to use that bad. <laughs> Come on now. Sometimes we don't like to be that bad, y'all. Well, I didn't do what so and so did. It don't make any difference. He is a sinner. If Jesus hadn't saved you, you would have wound up in hell. You know, we, we like to look at people and say, All right, the Lord don't need to save that person. They need to go to hell. I don't think Jesus intended for people to go to hell. Hell was not created for mankind. It was created for the devil and his imps and his demons. That's what hell was created for. But man's found his way there by Rejecting God. I, I need to move on. The law could not give you an inheritance. Romans 4, 13 and 14. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For they which are of the law be heirs. Faith is made void and promise made of no faith. Let me tell you something. If we got an inheritance with the, with the law, then faith is void. I want you to realize something this morning that when Jesus shed his blood, he made it available for all mankind. He made it available for me. He made it available for you. All that would come unto Jesus, he would no wise cast them out. So when we come to the cross of Calvary and we repented of our sins and that blood was applied to us, then we were grafted in. You hear me? That was Jesus' blood applied to a Gentile. This Gentile was grafted in because of the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We were grafted into the main vine. Jesus is the main vine. He's the vine. We're the branches. We were grafted into that. When we were grafted in by the blood of the Lamb, we were made heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We walk under a blood covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we are who God says we are. 
Nobody can count you out. Nobody can discard you. Everything that God has for you and I is in the scripture. We are adopted, amen, by the spirit of adoption. We were grafted in to the main mind through the blood that Jesus shed for our sins. Now, do you love him this morning? Do you love him because he pulled us out of death? The eighth one was this, perform miracles. The law could not perform miracles. Paul said in Galatians 3 and 5, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The law didn't do it. It's by faith. Faith is what moves God. Faith is what activates, activates miracles. I was thinking about this yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. When we attribute everything to Jesus, I think we're going to see some miracles. Because we know that Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith. We know that Jesus is the miracle worker. Amen. He is the miracle worker. And when we attribute everything to him, Jesus is going to work miracles because we're going to praise him and worship him. We've seen over the span of decades and decades upon decades, God would give the gift to man. Man would get the gift and God would use him and man would take the credit. I don't think God wants man to take the credit. Amen? Amen. I think God wants the credit. Does God deserve the credit? Yeah. After all, Jesus went to the cross. We didn't go to the cross. Amen. I believe God wants the credit. I believe we need to give him the praise. For as many as are the works of the law under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth, that everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. I believe God's keeping an eye on this thing, don't you? I believe God's watching it. It has to fall in the divine order of Christ. It has to fall in the divine order of the Father. And the Holy Ghost brings it about. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're justified by faith. Now, I wonder this morning if anybody could go back and, and uh, name every sin that we've done Everything, every time we've done God wrong, bring it to the altar and repent of everything one by one. We'd be here a while. Amen. That wasn't the way it worked. We just ask God to forgive us of our sins with an S multiple. How many of us know that we were found guilty? We didn't have a leg to stand on. We couldn't stand before God and say, Oh, wait a minute, God, I was good, I was perfect. He said, oh, I don't think so. Let me check you about this. And then he starts reading about things. Amen. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. And I want to read one more. And it has to do with perfection. The law could not make you perfect. That priest that went into the most holy place was not perfect. He only allowed him there because the blood was shed for the sins he had committed. In the past year. And you know this. They tied a rope to his leg. They tied a rope to his leg. Because they knew if he died in there. They couldn't go in there and get him. Everyone that went in that most holy place. Would have died. Until bodies would have been piled up. It was the rope. That would pull him out. That's how holy God is. And let me show you something. They was under the law. They bought me grace. You and I can come in that same presence this morning. Again, third time. No matter how the spiritual condition we are, no matter what we are, in the presence of God, and He hears us and He forgives us of our sins because Jesus came to save sinners. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> He made us perfect by the blood that he shed in Calvary. Perfection comes through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. 
Would you stand with me this morning? I hope you got something out of this today. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. But I come to give you liberty, saith the Lord. He's a liar and the father of all lies. But I come to give you the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And the truth is, my word will not return void. I say unto thee, my children, believe thou the word. Stand on my word. Test my word, saith God. I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot contain, saith the Lord. But walk before me as grace is upon thee this day. Walk beyond me with a perfect heart. And yea, I shall bless thee. I shall anoint thee, saith God. For yea, thou have been under attack, and I have watched every step. But I say unto thee this hour, plant that word in thy heart, that you will not sin against me, saith God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many times and many days in a week's time, God deals with us. Go to the Word. Go to the Word. Our strength is in that Word. Our direction is in that Word. The knowledge of God is in that word. The law of the Spirit is in this word. Everything we need is in God's word. Not to read as a story book, but to read as instructions about life. What about you this morning? Do you spend time in do you spend time in this book? Does it illuminate itself before your face? Is conviction in it? Do you feel the spirit? Do you feel the law? This word is spiritually written and spiritually discerned. It's the life of Christ. It's the light. It's deliverance. This morning, the Word of God is the most powerful thing in this universe. It formed the universe. It formed everything. And all God requires is to be found in His Word. I want to give a general all call this morning. You see and feel the need in your own walk with Christ that you need to be deeper in this Word. I want you to come. The Bible said, he that lacks wisdom, let him ask. I don't know about you, but I don't have near enough wisdom. I've been asking God lately. I need more wisdom. I need more knowledge of you, God. Would you come? Let's have a season of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You others, you may be seated if you can. You can come to the front, sit down in the front pew, whatever you need to do this morning. Father, we thank you today, Jesus. Thank you for the message and the interpretation there. The Lord, the invitation is here to come to the Lord. Lord, the word of God. I praise you this morning, Jesus, for every person that's under the sound of my voice. And I ask you, God, to move us. Everyone alive, move us closer to your word. 
in a relationship with you, Jesus. I pray. God, that you would move in them. Help us to be scholars of the Word. Oh, help us, God. Help us, God. Condition our hearts to receive it. Jesus, my Every person in the altar this morning. I pray, God, I will minister to them, visit with them, give them the power and the strength to overcome obstacles. And in the darkest, bleakest, dimmest time, that the word shine a light on the assault of the enemy. I pray this morning for every need by way of YouTube and Facebook. I pray, God, for revival of every person here today. Lord, I pray that the word will raise up a standard in us. A standard that would come against the wiles of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we can't make it without you. You're an ever-present help in a day and a time of trouble. I pray this morning to touch every person. Don't let us leave here this morning, Jesus, the same as we walked in the house. Change us, God, to a change. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Weapons of our warfare are not common. They're mighty to God. For the pulling down of strongholds in our lives. Think about who you were when Jesus saved you. Where was you at? I'm not talking about a geographical location. I'm talking about a spiritual condition. Where were you at when Jesus saved you? What kind of condition were you in? Yet he saved you. And brought you to where you're at this morning. Not without suffering. Not without warfare. Not without discouragements. But you pressed on.
that you've got to this place, that you are here this way, and can sense the presence of God, and you know that God's on your side, fighting your battles. We need to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. There's people that would love to trade places with you. To be in a New Testament and a Pentecostal church. But they couldn't get you. There's people in China who swap places with you in a heartbeat. It's in prison just because they found a piece of the Bible on them. You see, we don't have it bad. The worst part of us serving God's in our own life. The bad thing. But we've got to conquer and have the mind of Christ. They placed and they planted that crown of thorns on the brow of Jesus. He took care of the mind, the blood that was shed from those thorns. Prickly thorns shed that blood. It was for our minds. We need to take that to heart this morning. The reason the devil fights our mind. Because sometimes we just get more out there and give up. That's the reason we need the mind of Christ. That's the reason when Jesus shed that blood for his mind, for his, on his breath, was for our minds. Remind him, find that scripture in the Bible when you go to prayer and read it. And say, Lord, you shed this blood on your sinless brow because of the battles and warfare I go through in my mind. I want liberty in it. I want peace in my mind. I want resurrection in my mind. And he'll come. I'll tell you one more story in the Here come one Did I not say unto you, there shall come a shaking? I say this day, it's not over. I'm going to shake my church. I say unto thee, this hour be rooted and grounded in me, saith God. Do your diligence to follow me. And I say unto thee, this hour, Put your eyes on me, saith the Lord. For I will deliver. I will save. I will heal. But I say unto thee this hour, take note of the shaking across the world in my church, saith God. Hmm.
Lord, that the Shambok was preaching in the 5.10 in the Bronx, New York. They were setting the tent up. And this little lady come walking in under the tent, walked up on the podium where R.W. Shambach was doing whatever he does. And she said, Brother Shambach, God spoke to me and told me to buy this pack of M&Ms and put it on you to preach with it on you tonight. He said that, he told her, he said, I don't tote candy, I eat candy. She placed it in his coat pocket, turned and walked off. That night he preached under that tent, hundreds got saved, got healed. And at the end of the service, this lady walked up to him and said, I want my candy. said, my sister has been in the same asylum a number of years. And I'm taking this candy to her. For she loved M&M's. And she turned and walked off. He said he never heard from her, never saw her again for a long time. And he was back in that same place with that tent, setting it up. These two ladies walked in the door. Tent. Walked up on the podium where he was at. That one lady said, do you remember me? He said, no, I don't. He said, I see thousands of people. She said, I'm that little woman that brought that bag of candy to your wedding. He said, oh yes, I remember you now. She said, let me tell you the story. She said, I went to that insane world where my sister was. And I gave her that candy. She opened it up put some in her mouth. She said when she bit down that first time, all those demons left her. She came to her right mind. Said they let her go. She's come back home. She said the next morning I woke to the smell of bacon cooking. She said, I walked into the kitchen and there my sister was at the stove frying bacon for our breakfast. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. There's somebody here I need to put a anointed cloth on you this morning. As I was picking my suit out of the closet, and the spirit prompted me to check my pocket to see if I had an anointing cloth. I did. He said, well, check that suit. Get that cloth out. Leave it on it as you preach this morning. Somebody needs the yoke to be moved this morning. Maybe more than one. I don't know. This is an opportunity God's given you to be free from it. Free from wrestling. You come. I'm going to pray for you.
There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Father, thank you this morning for the miracle of Sister Christine. The anointing will destroy the yoke of bondage. It's not the, it's not the cloth. It's the point of contact with you. And the anointing. And the miracles that she needs in her life. In her body this morning. And I praise you, Lord. I give you all honor, all glory this morning. I praise you. You're the miracle worker. I'm just obeying you, Lord. And I thank you for it. For the miracles of the present. The present that he was here in this morning, Jesus. And I praise you all now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And let that depart from you. In your body. Give it to you, God, whatever you have to do. Anyone else? Okay. It works too, my sister. It works, no. <laughs> Brother George. We put a cloth on him years ago. He wears it every day to it fell all to pieces. Brother Sister Juanita, he said, I haven't been sick till all of this, this cloth was torn to pieces and fell off. So we're going to anoint another one for him. Amen. Hold your hand up. Father, thank you this morning for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Thank you, Lord, this morning for the obedience of your word and the prompting of your spirit. And Lord, as this cloth goes to the point that you designed it to go, that you destined it to go, God, let it do and accomplish what you were put forth to accomplish in it in the name of Jesus. And God, let us hear from you. Lord, the accomplishments for your anointing, Jesus. And I praise you for it, God. Give you honor for it this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. I need to tell you something. You have really been rational, spiritually, to the soul of your child. God's going to do us on the miraculous He's going to clarify. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. For we wrestle not in vain. Father, I thank you this morning for the anointing in this cloth. God, I thank you for the anointing in Sister Angel Strickland's life. Father, I thank you that the miracles are going to take place on this day in store. Yes, Lord. And Lord, those things she's wrestling with, clarify, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them come to the point, God, of clarity that she can see and know. And God, I pray that this anointing destroys that yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. Let's come against her and these girls. And Lord, I promise. I praise you this morning. I glorify you this morning. 
I give you all honor, Lord Jesus, for the miraculous that's going to take place in her life today, from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 What's your name? David, come on, all of them. Amen. Amen. Hold your hands up. You believe it? You believe in Jesus? Amen. Amen. This is a the reason we do this is because Paul, who are anchors of heart, put it on his body when he preached. When he got through preaching, he handed them out. The people were healed and delivered because of the anointing of Paul. And that's the reason we place it in your hands. You have a need for God to do. Amen. So what God's going to do, the anointing, it's in this cross. It's going to be in your lips to you. Father, we thank you this morning for the anointing in this clause for David. God, I ask you, Lord, let it cover every part of his life this morning. God, let this anointing destroy every assault against this young man's life this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you this morning that that call of God bears that anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. God, Lord, if you will be my body, shall come more to build that heart in the In the name of Jesus, I give you honor for the Lord this morning. Let it begin today, right now. Let the miracles begin today, right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would reveal yourself to him. In such a mighty way. Glory on my death, so can my court put the Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I give you all of this. Holy Ghost, I ask you to stand with me. The bell took a bite there, took a bite. That you did baptize him in the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of that to us. Fill him with the overflow of the youth. With your love and feelings. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Is he kin to you? Yes. Yes. something they ain't never felt before, don't you? <laughs> Stand with me. When the, when the Lord created the earth, he said, let us be down. He brooded over the earth. That's what the Holy Ghost is doing right now over you. He's going and brooding over you. God's going to touch you. God's going to touch you. He's destroyed all that past. He's doing away with it right now. Chains are breaking, sister. Chains are 
chains are breaking. Hallelujah. God is a sower. It's a sower. Let me tell you something that's how I eat it. Eat it like you're hungry. It's going to be a foundation of you. Everything that comes out of you is going to come out of the Lord. Everything you do is going to come out of the Lord. That's the reason the Holy Ghost was brooding over you. To make a change. Amen. Where do you go to church? Save that from your spiritual. We can gather a lot by ourselves with God. Sometimes He blesses us in a group of people. That helps us and loves us and prays for us. Makes a difference. Don't it? Fresh off the table. give you honor and glory and praise and worship for what you're doing in Kevin Hester's body, this mind, his spirit, his soul, his calling. I bind everything comes against him in the name of Jesus. And Lord, the anointing destroys that yoke. And I praise you, Lord God. A double portion of the in the name of Jesus. Establish his going now. Establish his coming in. God, everyone you put in his path, save them, deliver them, heal them, that the works of the Lord be prevalent in the man of God today. Let it begin today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put it in your bill for you. Keep your bill for we all the time. Put it in. It'll help your money too. It'll help your money too. Yes, yes we do. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Oh, my God. 
Those words are from the Lord speaking. The step that you take, I take with you. For my word is a lamp unto your feet, and a light unto your path. Follow me. Follow my God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> yes. When the priest anointed David, they had a horn of oil. They poured it over David's head and all over his body. That's how much he loved him. That's how David. He just didn't really have to do it. They did that. Hallelujah. 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 God, you've given him revelations of your word. And I pray for the anointing to destroy the yoke of bondage in the name of Jesus. Lord, that there is not a weapon that's formed against him that's going to prosper. For it's going to come up against the anointing and be destroyed right before his eyes. And I pray, God, that that change come to him today in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, that the shelf life has called that assault back. In the name of Jesus. It's no longer in effect. In the name of Jesus. I give you praise for that Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord's giving you gifts. <laughs> You saw in me last night. I see you here as well. There's an anointing here that's going to blow your mind. But there's gifts coming to this Amen. It's going to be so profound, sister. Can you keep up the pulse of the day that you get that gift? You want to tell me. The Lord entrusted it in me. Father, thank you for the anointing this morning, young sister of Victoria. Thank you, God, for the calling and gifts and the talents in me. Thank you, God, this morning. I thank you for the anointing, Lord, that destroys the yoke of bondage. I pray for an atmosphere around earth of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God, that the fire. Holy Ghost burns. Shari bato katata basha. Koma de de yadata basha. Koma de de le bato koko de de. Shabunda ele de de koko de baye de ba. Shandi a de 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 koko de kete de basha. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, God work miracles. Let the voice work miracles at the touching of her hands and the saving of her prayers for miracles here God. In Jesus' name. I call in a harvest of the seeds that she's sown. 
God let them come a hundredfold, a thousand times over. In the name of Jesus. And I praise you for God. Let them come in a place in a way that she don't expect. It. That way, God, she knows it comes from you. But Lord, you're a debtor to no man. And I thank you for that this morning. I worship you for the works of the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's birthday things in you. Thank you. Just as you feel then, sister, this church has been going through labor problems. Mm. Well, there's anointing up here. That's okay. Did you have that? Brother Bill, those things that you've been desiring from God, He's given to you today. He's going to complete it today. And all the chains and the bondage that's been trying to attach themselves to you, they're gone. He's a chain breaker this morning. The anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage in your hand is going to break the bondage that you've been fighting. God's fixing to set you free for that. Thank you, Jesus, for setting Bill back free this morning. Oh, yeah. Let him walk in liberty and freedom and joy. God, let him walk in the place where he's never walked with you. And God, let him bask in the love that you have for him. In the name of Jesus, God, touch him this morning. I pray supernatural, God, supernatural manifestation of your word in him. In the name of Jesus. And God touched this hands to do the work of the Lord, the anointing in these hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you, God. Lord, to give him a double portion of the Holy Ghost and fire. Give him a double portion of the Son of Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. Put that in your bill for me if you talk one every day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can't. We want to pray for Sister Mary. Amen. Hold your hand up. God knows you better. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you for the anointing that you're placing on Sister Bella Bender's body right now. Lord, this sickness has to leave and flee in the name of Jesus. Lord, the blood you shed in the judgment hall of Pilate was for the healing of the saints of God. It's the children's bread. Lord, the anointing destroys disease and pestilences in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray this morning, God, that you would anoint her. Anoint her, God, to heal in the name of Jesus. I pray for Aaron, God, turn his heart toward the cross. God, I pray for salvation. I pray, God, that your hand be upon him in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, to move right now through this anointing as she goes out to petition for these gifts, God, I pray. I ask you, God, for such an anointing on her that be willing to give her above and beyond what she desires. In the name of Jesus. Bless her body. I pray for that healing 
Strengthen it today by the anointing of God. Strengthen it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray for Brother Cephas. The Holy Ghost is fixing to breathe on him. Because you've been faithful to prayer for many churches and many pastors. God's fixing to favor you this morning. Father, thank you for the anointing in my brother this morning. God, for the walk that he's walked. God, for the price that he's paid. God, for the righteousness that he's been walking in. I praise you, God. And I pray for that anointing that destroys all of those things that's come against my brother. And I pray for a refreshing of the Spirit of God in him. A renewing in him in the name of Jesus. And I pray for such a freshness on him, God, that every morning he awakes. He feels the divine love of the Trinity this morning in Jesus' name. God, touch him. Touch him when he walks. Let him feel your presence, God, when he ministers, when he prays. God, let him feel you with the divine touch of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a faithful God. I've been faithful to my children. Whatsoever things ye desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and ye shall have them, saith the Lord. For I will give you the desires of your heart. I say unto thee, my children, pray and believe in me. For I will bring it to pass before your very eyes, saith the Lord. Hmm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you pray, expect it. Look for it. It's coming to pass. If the devil says it ain't going to happen, you need to dance yourself a jig. Because you know he's lying. <laughs> okay. Amen. Praise God. Any more to watch? I got more. I got more at home. This anointing is to do with your office. It's fixing to come along. And then you wonder, you said, God, where is he? No, I don't feel it. God said, it's fixing to come along. Get ready to see things you don't want to see, hear things you don't want to hear, do things you don't want to do. It comes with office. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the anointing on your prophet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the operation of the office begin this morning. In the name of Jesus, under the anointing and the unction of God, Lord, you set her aside. God, to be one of those that helps the body of Christ, to edify the body of Christ. 
touch you this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, it doesn't matter about the naysayers. She's not an off, she don't hold the office of a prophet because people think she ought to have it. Because she's called of God. Amen. Mm. 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 I'm not anointed because you think I need to be a donor. I'm anointed because of God. His hand and seal of approval. So it doesn't matter what you think of me, do to me, around me, behind me. I'm anointed of God. Amen. The more you will me, the closer to God I can get. Breathe on the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. 
Breathe on him, Lord. Shade ba kote be kete ba. Yes, Lord. Cleanse his heart, God. Cleanse him. Let the blood of Jesus Christ be applied. Fill his heart with righteous things, anointed things, purifying things, God. I have filled you this day. I have filled you with me, saith God, for ye are not your own. But you've been bought with a price. Get a glimpse of the cross that I shed my blood for you, saith God. And yea, I shall do mighty things at the request of your prayer and the plague on, on of your hands, saith God. I shall do many things, saith God. I have to hold on to it. Be not drunk with wine or in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Yes! Holy Ghost! Yes! Come on, lift your hands and praise God this morning. Father, we love you. Very hard to do like a how you feel, Sister Christine? How you feel? Wow. Life at it, brother. He ain't brought you no more. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll give my life, blood, for your sins. That's how much Jesus loves us. The devil will trick you and leave you. Jesus said, I'll never. I'll be with you always. I'll be with you when you do good, when you do bad, or mediocre. I'll be with you always. That's right. Absolutely. That's a good start. You can trust Jesus. You can trust Jesus. He'll do the trust. You got a good track record with me. <laughs> Amen. He understand. He's the best wife in the world, too, isn't he? <laughs> Amen. I can't move yet, but. It's no accident that you were here this morning to see God. That was one o'clock. Yes, yeah. Brother Cephas, we're coming to you in a minute. But I'll pray for you, sister. Praise God. God speaks of the strength of that God. 